Hello again and welcome to another edition of Yesterday's News. Today's Tuesday, August 23rd, so let's get to yesterday's news, shall we? It's a rhetorical question, just so you know. Can't hear you. First story of the day from WBEZ. Chicago keeps some school construction plans under wraps. This story coming to us from Sarah Karp, one of the education reporters over at WBEZ and a friend of the show. Thank you, Sarah. As we said last week, Chicago Public Schools is looking to borrow a lot of money right now. Since they're looking to borrow all this money, people were surprised to learn that there are a lot of plans to construct new buildings. Three schools, in fact. A high school in the Reed Dunning neighborhood on the northwest side, a high school in the Loop, and a high school in Englewood, a south side community with several severely under enrolled high schools. So there's a lot of very empty high schools down there, but there are plans to build another one. It's interesting. We know that there are construction projects in the works because WBEZ obtained a secret list. Ooh, that sounds cool. Obviously, we don't have the full scope of context for this list right now. Yet again, I mentioned that CPS is looking to borrow some money to make this happen, yet they cannot announce what projects that they are going to have construction for. The article says, CPS treasurer said, we don't know what we'll be able to fund. There are unlimited capital needs, you know? I know. I have unlimited capital needs, too. I am notorious for my capital needs. But the article says, Emanuel and district officials are holding secret meetings with parents and others about some of the building projects. So they have to see how much they can borrow, and then, when they know how much money they'll have, they'll how much they can spend on construction. Makes sense to me, I guess. Second story of the day from WTTW Chicago Tonight. Voters to decide on downsizing Cook County government by Paris Schutz. What up, Paris? Thank you, man. So what's going on here? This November, voters in Cook County will have the chance to eliminate an entire office of Cook County government. Some county commissioners say the savings from merging the Recorder of Deeds office with the county clerk's office could top $1 million annually. $1 million is a lot of money. And as we just heard, we are a little bit cash-strapped as a school system and a county in general. So is it a good idea to take the Recorder of Deeds office and roll that into the county clerk's office? Well, I guess my first question would be what does the Recorder of Deeds office do? And the article says, The Recorder of Deeds Office keeps and maintains various county records, most notably deeds on county properties. Sounds pretty important to me. Do we want to roll this in with the county clerk's office, which I'm sure has plenty of stuff to do? Well, a quote from the current Recorder of Deeds for Cook County, Karen Yarbrough, says, If you didn't have this office and the work we do here, you'd have all kinds of problems with your personal property and real estate in general. To merge it is not in the best interest of taxpayers. Okay, well, I would take her word for it because she is the recorder of deeds so she would know whether or not that's a good idea, right? Basically, people who think that we should consolidate the office of recorder of deeds into the county clerk's office say we're going to save a ton of money and we're going to make things less complicated for government. But not only do opponents to this say that it would make things more complicated for taxpayers, there's also a suspect racial element here as well. Cook County Commissioner Richard Boykin is quoted in the article as saying, we don't know how much it's going to cost to merge the two offices together. And of course, this is an African American office holder. A lot of people are asking the question whether or not this is an all-out attack on African-American political leaders. This is, like, I kind of out of left field for me, but, I mean, I don't know what to make of this. A million dollars is really enticing, but if this is bad for taxpayers and there's a racial element involved, I want nothing to do with this. So when you go to vote for president, this may also be on the ballot for something that you have to vote for as a Cook County resident, or on the story as it develops. Third story of the day. From the Chicago Tribune, Realtors trying to loosen rules on penalties in security deposit cases. Ugh. This from Hal Dardick at the Chicago Tribune. Thank you very much, Hal. So what's going on here? There's an ordinance in this article that they're arguing about. And basically, if a landlord doesn't give you your security deposit back, or if it's less than it's supposed to be, the law states they must be two times the security deposit plus interest. So you get twice as much back plus interest if they give you the wrong amount. Sounds pretty sweet to me, but I'm a renter. The article continues. It's resulted in some draconian payouts for minor mistakes, like being off by as little as much as a penny. That doesn't sound very fair, I must say. Alderman Joe Moore of the 49th District is chairman of the City Council Housing Committee. So this is the committee that will basically decide if this gets put on the City Council floor for a vote. He says he's going to hold off on making a decision right now and hold a hearing in the fall about this, which I look very much forward to. Moore says the change seems reasonable, that's a quote, but he wants to hear from the tenants' rights folks. I would also agree wholeheartedly with that. I may be slightly biased here because I am a renter, but I am also not a journalist. Do you think it's weird that Chicago Public Schools is keeping a secret list of what it wants to build? Do you have any idea what the Cook County Recorder of Deeds does? Has your landlord given you back the wrong security deposit? Leave me a comment in the comment section. The sole purpose of the comment section is to house said comments. Give it some love. As always, like, share, subscribe, and comment. I thank you for watching. I'm Pat Whalen. This is Yesterday's News. Come back tomorrow where I'll talk about today. Peace.